Caleb and I, we've been friends for uh, at least four years now. Um, and we've been working together. We, we worked together at the Progressive Policy Institute in our last job for more than a year. Worked very closely together. And then we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. And we would say, like, you know, where is the progress of these think tank? Where is the effective altruism think tank in DC? And so we just kept looking around and being like, if not us, then who, right? Like, mm. like why, why hasn't this happened yet? And so it could have been, maybe it's a bad idea. It doesn't need to exist, but we thought it was a good idea. Um, and we decided not to wait around anymore. And I'm actually talking to one of our friends, Mark Letter, who's founder of the Charter Cities Institute. Um, he really gave us the final push we needed last summer, early last summer to say, look, like guys, like there are donors who want to support new institutions. Um, and this is an idea that needs to happen. We, I think, I think you guys are well suited to do it. And that kind of just gave us the last final shove to be like, yeah, let's just pull, let's pull the trigger on this. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was similar, uh, to my thinking in starting, uh, CSPI. I was basically talking to people and I was not happy with sort of a lot of social science and how it was being done. And I'm like, you know, somebody should do this other organization that's doing something else. And they're like, well, what about you? And I said, you know, I don't know. <laughs> and then I finally said, okay, what about me? Yeah. You, you get, you, you get used to the uh, idea eventually. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, a word of advice to anyone out there, just because no one has done something before that sounds like a good idea, um, doesn't mean it can't be done. Right. It just means that no one has done it. And if everyone thinks, you know, why should it be me? You know, if you can, you can imagine there's a lot of sort of complacency and inertia, um, and the kind of, and like risk aversion and the kinds of things people do. Um, totally. yeah, I would just, just to add on that a little bit, cause it's an issue. I feel passionate about is that I think I think the median person in DC and he may and even the median American is way too risk averse. Like I would say, like even irrationally risk averse. Yeah. People view so many things as um, to borrow, borrow a metaphor. I think from I first heard from Jeff Bezos at Amazon is like um, people think of so many things as as one way doors. Like if you make this decision and walk through the door, you can never go back, and like you're committed to this like future life path forever. And the vast, vast majority of decisions in life are two-way doors. You can go through, if things don't work out, you can come back to the same door and like start over or, you know, um, try again, try something else. And so I think people should just take more risks, start new things. If it doesn't work out, failure is okay. Um, As long as you act with integrity and try your best, most people will just respect you, respect you more for trying in the first place and you'll have opportunities. And so Caleb and I realized like, if this doesn't work out, we can get other think tank jobs. We have good networks. People support our work, um, want to see us succeed. And so we think we have a very high chance of success and we're confident in the odds of our institution being here in 10 years and being much larger. But even in the, the worst case scenario where it doesn't work out, we're okay with that. And I think that I want to encourage a lot of my friends and people I know um, to take more risks. And you know, if things don't work out, like you're going to be okay, even though it seems scary. Yeah, I agree. And I think one thing that made me sort of less risk averse in life was reading some evolutionary theory somewhere, which basically, the you know, the idea that why humans are sort of pathologically risk averse and uh, uh, just the way we're living today is because if you think about the, you know, the environment where we were uh, evolutionarily adapting to. So like, you know, you get nervous about talking to some person, right? Um, the, you know, the idea was in the, in the distant past, you would only have like a small village. And if you made a fool out of yourself, right, you would be, uh, you know, kicked out of the village. If you, if you went and you talked to the wrong uh, woman who was uh, attractive, she was paired up with, you know, the strongest guy in the village, he would come club you over the head, you know, and you, and, and you die. Right. So it was actually right. an existential, you know, screwing up socially was actually a matter of life and death. And we bring that hardware um, into today's world. And we think if I start this think tank or I start this new kind of career, or there's an entrepreneurial opportunity that's sort of a off the path that everyone else is following. Um, you know, something inside you says, I'm going to, I'm going to die. Right. <laughs> and, and you're not going to die. Yes. You're not going to die. You might waste a, you know, a year or two of your life, but you'll learn something and you might actually succeed. Um, so yeah, it's important to sort of, you know, overcome those primitive emotions and, you know, go out there and do something. And I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. 